Tonight, our special transmission as pro-Palestinian activism gains momentum in North America. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahar Sayed. Today is the 201st day since the onset of Israel's war. Palestinian Health Ministry reports in the past 24 hours, Israeli strikes have killed 43 Palestinians in Gaza. 64 have been injured. A Belgian aid worker and his seven-year-old son are amongst the casualties. A Palestinian journalist, Mohammed al-Jamal, has been killed in an airstrike. This brings a total death toll of journalists since October to 141. The Israeli military continues its artillery fire at the Nusirat refugee camp and the Burej refugee camp, causing many casualties. Shelling by Israeli tanks in central Gaza has killed four civilians. A top Hamas official, Khalil al Haya, says Hamas is willing to agree to a truce of five years if Israel agrees to the transformation of the militant group into a political party, and if a two-state solution is implemented. The death toll from Israel's war continues to mount. At the time of writing, at least 34,305 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces. The casualties include more than 14,005 children and 9,500 women. A report by the United Nations estimates another 8,000 are buried under the rubble. 77,293 Palestinians are wounded. Israel's revised death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Israeli media reports an impending ground invasion of Rafah city in southern Gaza. The Israeli forces plan to further displace more than a million Palestinians. Reports say the decision comes after Hamas rejected truce conditions proposed by Israel. Israeli sources have confirmed the procurement of tens of thousands of tents to accommodate the displaced. Satellite images show tents being erected in nearby Khan Yunus. The Israeli military has mobilized two reservist brigades for the operation. Rafah is impoverished due to an Israeli blockade. It has seen its population swell to 1.5 million after displacements from other areas in Gaza. Gaza Civil Defense Agency says Israeli forces buried at least 10 Palestinians alive in Khan Yunis during its operation. During a press conference today, head of the city's civil defense department, Yamin Abu Suleiman, said three mass graves have been unearthed in the area. So far, 392 bodies have been discovered. Only 65 bodies have been identified due to a decomposition and mutilation. 20 are suspected to be live burials, including those of children. 10 bodies have been recovered with hands tied and medical tubes, hinting they were buried alive. Abu Suleiman says the graves are found near the dialysis building of Nasser Hospital. Bodies were haphazardly stacked, bearing signs of field executions. Palestinian civil defense is conducting a forensic examination for the burials. The search for more burials in Khan Yunis continues. Recently released Palestinian prisoners are revealing harrowing accounts of abuse in Israeli prisons. They had been detained for six months since the onset of Israel's war. They show signs of severe mistreatment, including injuries, damaged skin, and fatigue. 74-year-old activist Omar Asaf describes the conditions in the prisons as cruel. He has detailed beatings by Israeli staff and medical negligence. Rights groups report over 8,000 Palestinians, including women and children, have been arrested in the past six months. A researcher at the Palestine Center for Prisoner Studies, Amina El Tawil, says most prisoners are being humiliated and assaulted. Testimonies from other prisoners also highlight systematic abuse. Some prisoners say they have been attacked by far-right Israeli officials. At least 16 prisoners have died in Israeli custody. Israeli officials refuse to release their bodies. Activists continue to call on Israel to end the secrecy and allow communication of prisoners with their families.
Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called for stronger measures to halt pro-Palestinian demonstrations on American campuses. He is condemning the protests. Netanyahu terms the activism as horrific actions by anti-Semitic mobs in leading universities. He is calling the response of some university presidents as shameful. He is also demanding unequivocal condemnation. The protests are prompting calls for a ceasefire and divestment from Israeli-linked companies. Some Israeli students and faculty members allege they feel threatened due to the hostile environment created by the protests. New York University in the United States is facing criticism for constructing a wooden wall to deter anti-war demonstrators. The news comes after the country is grappling with nationwide pro-Palestinian protests. In the past few days, there have been encampments in leading academic institutions. Students across the campuses are demanding divestment from companies involved in Israeli occupation. Following the move to buy New York University, critics are condemning the authorities. Students and faculty are also denouncing the wall as emblematic of the university's suppression of the Palestine discourse. The university has not commented on the situation. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not for profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit MuslimNetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.